Welcome back to Madman Review. Ever pondered whether a simple bullet could turn the tables in a courtroom? In this video, we'll talk about this complex and kind of controversial topic. Hollow point bullets, known for their effectiveness in self-defense situations, expand upon impact, minimizing the risk to bystanders. Yet these same characteristics have sparked heated debates in legal circles. We'll unpack real-life cases like Culp v. State of Florida, where the use of hollow points became a focal point in court, and examine how what's seen as a responsible choice by many could be portrayed as a malevolent intent by prosecutors. Our journey explores the thin line between self-defense and legal repercussions, highlighting cases where the choice of ammunition played a crucial role in criminal trials. From the courtroom drama surrounding the infamous Long v. Yates case to another lesser-known yet equally intriguing story, we'll uncover the surprising and sometimes alarming ways how hollow-point ammo can influence the outcome of legal proceedings. So, buckle up for a thought-provoking exploration of ballistics, law, and the unexpected ways your ammo choice can echo in the halls of justice. What's the point of hollow-points? Nope, no pun intended. So just talking about self-defense and nothing else, we want something reliable, effective, and safe, yeah? That's where hollow points come into play. These little guys have a hollowed out tip that does something pretty important. It expands on impact. This expansion isn't just for show. It's a critical feature. In a self-defense situation, you're not just shooting at paper targets. You're in a real-life scenario where stopping an aggressor effectively and safely is the top priority. Hollow points are designed to expand upon hitting a target, creating a larger wound cavity. This is key for stopping a threat quickly. In the heat of the moment, you need something that's going to do its job effectively. And that's exactly what hollow points are designed to do. But there's more to it. With FMJ bullets, there's a risk they'll just zip right through the target. This isn't just about stopping power, it's also about safety. FMJs can pass through an intended target and potentially hit something, or someone else. And that's a risk you don't want to take, especially in a self-defense situation where every second and every shot counts. Let's crunch some numbers. In an exhaustive ballistics test done by Lucky Gunner, which some of you have probably seen, they found that the Barnes 115 grain TAC XPD Plus P outperforms all other hollow point ammo brands when fired from a Smith & Wesson M&P9C with a 3.5 inch barrel. This Barnes bullet has a superb combination of power, precision, and punch, making it one of the best possible ammo choices for personal defense. In their ballistics gel test, Lucky Gunner found that this bullet averaged a penetration depth of 13.4 inches. That's right in the sweet spot of the FBI's recommended 12 to 18 inches. Why does that matter? It's deep enough to reach vital organs, but not so deep that it risks overpenetration and unintended damage. In a self-defense situation, that's crucial. But it's not just about how deep it goes, it's also about the impact. The TAC XPD expands like a champ, mushrooming from a 0.355 inch diameter to a whopping 0.70 inch. Creates a larger wound channel, making it more likely to hit something vital and stop an attacker in their tracks. As far as velocity, the Barnes 115 grain flies at an average of 1,043 feet per second out of a 3.5-inch Smith & Wesson M&P9C. That's some serious speed, giving the bullet the oomph it needs to do its job effectively. And with a muzzle energy of 278 foot-pounds, it's packing a pretty hard punch that's hard to ignore considering it's from a 3.5-inch barrel. Now... Why is this a better choice than your standard full metal jacket ammo? FMJ rounds are great for target practice. They're cheaper 
and don't expand. But in a real world defense scenario, you want expansion. You certainly don't want too much penetration. Hollow points are designed to maximize damage to the target and minimize the risk of passing through and causing collateral harm. So on paper, at least as far as we knowledgeable gun folks are concerned, hollow points are the bee's knees when it comes to defensive handgun ammo. But left-leaning anti-gun attorneys, judges, and lay people in the jury box don't give two hoots about the practicality of hollow points. Should we use hollow points? People everywhere online ask a lot if using hollow points is something that could get them in trouble if they use it in their carry guns to defend their lives. So, no matter what you take away from this video or what you've heard about the legal side of things, and despite what I personally know, I still stand by using hollow points for self-defense. Basically, hollow point ammo is a bullet with a tip that's hollowed out, kind of like a deep bowl. This design makes the bullet expand when it hits something, creating bigger wound channels and making it really effective against targets without armor. And yeah, I know you're going to ask, after doing my homework, I'm pretty impressed with Federal HST ammo in all calibers. Not tied to them or anything, just really dig their stuff, and the gel tests online back it up as a top choice. The thing is, because hollow points are so darn effective and kind of misunderstood by, again, leftist anti-gunners, folks who legally carry guns worry about how it looks in court if they ever have to use them in self-defense. If it comes down to it, your lawyer should definitely argue that choosing hollow points is all about being a responsible gun owner picking the best tool for the job and, hey, even law enforcement uses them. But then, could the law try to spin it like you're some sort of monster for choosing ammo that does more damage? Wouldn't be the first time they've tried that angle. So here's some good news to start with. Most of the cases I've looked into aren't about the average Joe defending his home and ending up in trouble. They're usually more, well complicated. Take, for example, the Culp versus State of Florida case. It's a classic Florida mix-up involving a guy named Culp, his ex, and a dude known to be a crack addict. Then there's Motorcycle Dad, part of this whole fiasco, who gets into a fight, fires some warning shots, and ends up with an attempted murder charge. Why? Well, because he used hollow points which the other guys claimed were meant for killing. This whole thing becomes a big deal in court. In cases like these, it's all about the shooter's intent, letting jurors hear from someone not exactly an expert and potentially high on crack about hollow points wasn't fair, said the appeals court. This kind of sets a stage where if a legit expert said the same thing, it might be taken seriously. Then there's this other off-the-wall case, Long versus Yates. It's a real-life sitcom. David Long shoots his brother Ken over something as silly as chores while having a bit too much to drink. The catch? He used a hollow-point bullet. In court, they start calling these cop-killer bullets, and that really amps up the drama. The court actually sided with this, agreeing that hollow points are known as cop-killer bullets. It's a bit wild to think how your bullet choice can create such a storm in court, especially when they start throwing around terms like cop killer. So there's a chance that in court, they could label your choice of using hollow points as using cop killer bullets. There's some history of this kind of talk in court backed up by experts in ballistics or even cops, but don't freak out over this. What's the big lesson here? Again, in those two cases we checked out, like Culp versus State of Florida and Long versus Yates, there's this common thread where they say hollow points are all about killing. But these cases were kind of sketchy to begin with. It seems like this hollow point talk usually pops up in cases about premeditated or attempted murder where they need to prove you wanted to kill. Like, if David didn't mean to kill his brother, then... Why use cop-killer bullets, right? But 
For most of us, we're more likely to be fending ourselves in our own homes or maybe out in public, which isn't what went down in the Culp versus Long cases. Both of those were about attacks in the so-called victim's home, which leans more towards attempted murder than self-defense. So if you're ever in a sticky situation where you gotta defend yourself, especially in someone else's house, you might want to skip the hollow points. How about rip ammo? You've heard of that stuff, right? It's this flashy, kind of over-the-top ammo. Rip, as in radically invasive projectile. Man, using that is like handing a prosecutor their dream case on a silver platter. Honestly, I wouldn't touch rip rounds even if they were as legendary as these Indian bullets from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Just too much drama for the courtroom. They'd make you look real bad in front of a jury. (laughs) The case of the rip bullets. You wouldn't believe it, but there was actually a court case involving rip ammo. Back in 2017, this guy named Bob Martinez decides to shoot his cousin with a DIY Tech 9. And guess what he loaded it with? Rip ammo. The kind that's all about putting someone down hard. He practically got his street smarts degree because he straight up tells the police it was self-defense and brags about his choice of ammo. Seems like he bought every word of Rip's tough guy marketing. But here's the twist. The ammo didn't work as well as he thought. His cousin survived the shooting. Martinez even admitted to the cops that he was aiming for a headshot. The money shot, as he called it. He sounded pretty frustrated that his cousin lived, thinking he could have gotten away with murder. If only the shot had done the job. Talk about being overconfident. In the end, Bob Martinez was found guilty of a bunch of stuff, including attempted manslaughter. Just goes to show, sometimes what you think is your smartest move can turn out to be your biggest mistake. Straight from the horse's mouth in the official court documents, Martinez fesses up to shooting Smith when he's getting grilled by the cops. At the trial, he's not shy about it. Instead of popping in to say hi to grandma in her house, he makes a beeline for the shed where his cousin and his cousin's girl were hanging out. And after he shoots Smith, he doesn't stick around to help or call 911 or anything. He just splits. Later on, he's pretty upfront with the cops, saying he wishes he'd done his cousin in for good. So, what do you think happened to Martinez? Yeah, you guessed it. Guilty as charged. Last I checked, he's still in jail, probably replaying that whole mess in his head and wishing he'd made some different choices. All right, so after watching this, you've probably got your own take on hollow points. Legally, sure, there's room for argument, but let's be real. Openly admitting you tried to off someone isn't the smartest move if you're trying to dodge a prison sentence. When push comes to shove, I'm all about choosing what works best for keeping me safe and I'll make sure my lawyer can break it down for a jury. You know, get them to see the irony that these so-called cop killer bullets are actually what the cops use, and they're less likely to hurt bystanders. And that wraps up this video. If it was helpful or entertaining, consider leaving a like, sharing, and subscribing if you haven't already. Click on that notification bell too for more of these videos. Thanks for watching, and stay safe out there.